Exodus chapter number 3, we'll begin reading in verse number 1. The Bible says, Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will, turn, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he saw, said, Draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Can I say, any time you find God appearing to man in the Bible, you find the same result. Man falls before God. That's why i got a real problem with a lot of things that are called of the Holy Ghost today. Holy Ghost ain't in it. God's not in a circus. God's in worshiping him in the beauty of holiness but anyway the Bible said in verse 7 and the Lord said I've surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters for I know their sorrows and I'm come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the, that land unto a good land and a large and a land flowing with milk and honey Unto the place of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I? that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt. And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee, that I have sent thee, when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. Let's pray. Father, oh, our hearts have been blessed to be in the house of God. We've enjoyed a good time of fellowship. We've enjoyed the good singing. We've enjoyed the goodness of God just blessing us tonight. Lord, we could leave right now and say it's good to be the house of God. But Lord, we're thankful for the Word of God. It's a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. It is wherein lies our hope. We found you through the Word of God. Lord, we just bless you and praise you for it. And I pray you'd strengthen us. I pray you'd help us tonight. I pray you'd speak to every heart, and I certainly pray that you'd be magnified and glorified above all others. Lord, you know the need of every heart here tonight. Lord, no doubt there are some who are struggling. I pray you'd strengthen them. There are some, Lord, who, Lord, need a touch. I pray you'd touch them. There are some who are seeking. I pray they'd find. And then, Lord, there are some who do not know you in the free pardon of sins. I pray you'd reveal their lost condition to them tonight. And I pray that today would be the day of their salvation. Lord, I pray that you'd use this unworthy vessel, and I pray that you'd be glorified. Help us now, Lord, and we'll bless you for it. For it's in the holy and wonderful name of Jesus we ask it all. Amen. Amen. I want you to notice several things as a way of introduction to this text. And there's a whole lot of preaching in this text, and I'm not going to get bogged down with too much in the text, or we won't get to the message. But I want you to notice, first of all, Moses got a vision. Look again at verse number 2. The Bible says, An angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. 
The Bible says where there is no vision, the people perish. The reason a lot of God's people are drying up on the vine, they've lost sight of God. Anytime you find in the Old Testament the word or the phrase, the angel of the Lord, that is Jesus Christ himself manifesting himself in the Old Testament. Uh, say, who did, Abraham, or who did Moses meet with there on the mount? The Lord, Jesus Christ. Uh, and so we see he got a vision uh, of a bush that was not consumed. And by the way, uh, anything that the Lord uh, anoints uh, will not consume in his presence. Uh, what a blessing when he uh, uh, indwelled you and I. We didn't consume, uh, but we got set on fire. There's a big difference, and so I bless the Lord. We see he got a vision, but notice he got a visit. Look in verse number 4. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see God, uh, to see God called unto him out of the midst of the bush, uh, and he said, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here am I. Uh, and he said, Draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place uh, whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, uh, for he was afraid to look upon God. Uh, can I say, first he got a vision, then he got a visit. Uh, what a blessing that Moses, uh, when he realized there was something happening, he turned toward it. Uh, and what a blessing for you and I, when God began to speak to our hearts, uh, we turned to the Lord uh, and got born again. What a blessing. Uh, we find that he got a visit, uh, and when he turned towards God, God called upon him, uh, called him by name. Uh, Moses, Moses, uh, explained who he was. Uh, I'm the God of thy father, the God of Jacob, Abraham, Isaac, all them folks. Uh, he said, the place where I, whereupon thou standest is holy ground. Uh, uh, what a blessing to know these things. Uh, he got a visit. Can I say, never take for granted when God shows up. Mm. Can I say, God's not obligated to ever show up. Hmm. Can I say Moses was looking for him when he did show up? But you ought to praise the Lord when he does show up. You ought to count it a choice blessing when he shows up, and you better take note of what he says when he shows up. We see that he got a, uh, he got a vision, then he got a visit, but then he got a vocation. Look at verse 10. Lord speaking to him says, Come now, therefore, I will send thee unto Pharaoh. About this time Moses swallows his Adam at, Adam's apple. You know Moses is here because Moses committed murder down in Egypt. Uh, by the way, there's a whole bunch of folks say y'all never go to jail and preach to them people. They're, they're getting what they deserve. Well, if Moses got what he deserved, he'd been in hell, not the deliverer of Egypt. Can I say the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin? Can I say God can even use a murderer? Hmm? Uh so that didn't cost you anything. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee, that I have sent thee, when thou brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. This is a very mountain that God ends up giving him the Ten Commandments from. But can I say some things here? He got a vocation. God gave him something to do. Listen, God's got plenty to do. He's just looking for folks who are willing to do them. He's not looking for your abilities. Matter of fact, if we read on, you'll find out Moses will tell him, I'm not eloquent of speech. I can't go down there. So he said, well, take your brother Aaron. He, he gets down there, and Aaron never says a thing. Moses, he's, he's done this all the talking. huh? He's not looking for your abilities. Matter of fact, if you think uh, you've got the ability for God to use, I, I, I'm going to tell you something right now. God's never going to use you. He's looking for your availability. Hmm? Uh, He's always speaking. He's always calling. He's always sending. And you say, how come he hasn't sent me? You've not been available. Or maybe you're not willing to be what he wants you to be. He might not be looking to send you to St. Lucia. He might just be looking to send you across the street. He might be just looking to send you from the back pew to the front pew. And that's no reflection on people sitting on the back pew. I'm just telling you, God's got something for you to do. Mm, are you willing to do it? 
Here's the thing, Brother Sammy. Everybody wants to be, you know, the big shot. Everybody wants to be the Pope of St. Lucia. Uh, everybody wants to be down there in paradise and hanging out with Emmanuel Charles, God help them, and uh, doing all the stuff you do. Huh? Everybody wants something else. But are they willing to do what God wants them to do? Hmm? Huh? And by the way, God will never bless you to do big things if you're not willing to do little things. And I've found that God does a whole lot more with the little things than he ever does with the big things. Hmm? He took a little lad with a little lunch and fed over 5,000. We just read that the other night. Huh? There's a whole lot in this Bible about little things. Not too much about big things. God reserves the big things for himself. Parting Red Seas, shutting lions' mouths. Hmm? But notice some things about this. I'm interested there in verse 11. Where he says, Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh. Now, now look in verse 11. And Moses said unto God, Who am I? You ever said that? You ever sung that song? Huh? Now, can I say this question that Moses asked God? It's a humble question. Who am I? And if we're all honest, there's none of us worthy to do anything for God. Hmm? None of us worthy to even be saved. The only thing we're really worthy of is hell. So it's a, it's a humble question. Moses is not being a smart aleck. Moses is not uh, 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 dishonoring God. He's being very humble before God. He's saying, look at me. I'm nobody. Who am I? That you go, it's a humble question. Can I say it's an honest question? Who is Moses? Now, looking back, we think, oh, Moses, the great leader of Israel, the man who, who God gave the first five books of the Bible, Moses, uh, uh, who led him through the wilderness for 40 years. Moses, Moses, Moses. You know he's serving a Midianite? He's tending sheep on the backside of a desert. He's not in no special grassland. He's a nobody that nobody cares about but God. It's a humble question. It's an honest question. It's also a hypostatic question. That's a big fancy word for essential. It's an essential question. See, God will never use a man greatly till he breaks him. It's an essential question. Moses will never go on to face Pharaoh until he comes face to face with the end of Moses. It's a very essential question. Uh, and when you think about it, who are we? Who are we that God would seek us out? He sought you. He came to where you was in your lost condition on the backside of whatever desert you was, uh, and he desired you. He sought you out. He came because you couldn't get to where he was. Uh, uh, you didn't even retain God in your knowledge. Uh, 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 you was lost, you were dead in trespasses and sins uh, 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 listen, the devil had you lock, stock and barreled uh, had you bound in chains of sin uh, but God came to where you was uh, and God revealed himself to you uh, who are you and who am I uh, that God would seek us out uh, who am I that he sought us hmm? who are we that he'd save us do you know what a tremendous miracle it is that we're not in the middle of India somewhere and have never heard the name of Jesus Christ? Do you know there are more Hindus in the world than there are Christians? Do you know there are more Muslims in the world than there are Christians? Do you realize there are more Buddhists in the world than there are Christians? There are more agnostics in the world than there are Christians. Uh, uh, why weren't you born in China? Why weren't you born in North Korea? Why weren't you born in Cuba? Why weren't you born in Russia? Why weren't you born somewhere where Jesus Christ is never presented to people? Who are we to be saved tonight? Hmm? It's a miracle that you even heard the gospel. It's a miracle you've even heard the gospel in America. 
Because most churches aren't even presenting the gospel anymore. Who are we to be sought out? Who are we to be saved? And who are we to serve God? I mean, you wouldn't you think he'd have somebody more qualified? More educated? More talented? Huh? Who are we? To serve God. Well, this question finds legitimacy when it's based on the subject. Moses asked the question, and the subject is him. It loses all contextual merit when the emphasis is properly focused. Say, so what are you talking about, preacher? I'm glad you asked. Look down at verse 13. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come to the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you, they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. Now when you put the contextual merit where it should be, it should not say, Who am I? It should say, Who is he? It's not, I am. It's the I am. It's not me, it's Him. And when it's all about Him, it can get done. When it's all about me, nothing gets done. When it's all about who am I, nothing will ever be accomplished. We'll never pull on our bootstrap and get out of the desert. But way, when it's all about the I am, rather than am I, uh, great things can be done because he's the one doing them. And with that in mind, I want to preach on the great I am. Not who am I. The great I am. Can I say some things about I am that I am? Can I say tonight that he's the unconfined one? He's self-existent. God didn't need anybody to come by and make him. God didn't need anybody to sustain him. God doesn't need anybody to support him. God is the all-sufficient, self-existent one. Uh, he's unconfined. Uh, God is not limited by time or space. Uh, God is not limited by any elements. Uh, uh, God is almighty. Uh, God is self-existent. Uh, he needs nothing nor anyone to survive. Uh, and my dear friends, uh, uh, we couldn't survive one second without Him. Uh, what a blessing. Uh, uh, the great I Am is the unconfined, self-existent. One, uh, I can put my faith in him uh, uh, because books cannot uh, say enough about him. Uh, there aren't enough words to describe him. Uh, there's not enough space to contain him. Uh, hey, he is uh, the great I am. Uh, he's not only the unconfined one, uh, he's the unending one. Uh, he is from Alpha to Omega. He has always been uh, and will always be. Uh, he is unending. Uh, Hey, you and I uh, have a starting point uh, and an ending point, uh, but not him. Uh, hey, there's never been a time he wasn't, uh, and there'll never be a time he won't be. Uh, he's the unending one. Uh, can I say he's the unequaled one? Uh, he has all power tonight. Uh, he's never been challenged. Uh, he's never been put to contest. Uh, there's nobody like him. Uh, there's nobody that can ascend to where he is. Uh, hey, uh, his side throne is in the sides of the north. Uh, his hands span from as far as the east uh, to the west. Uh, hey, he's unequaled. Uh, there's no one as great as him. Uh, no one as glorious as him. Uh, no one as good as him. Uh, no one as gracious as him. Uh, hey, he's unequaled. Uh, can I say he's the unequivocal one? Uh, that means clear-cut, obvious. Uh, there's no one else beside him. Uh, he is the Lord. Uh, he is the I Am. Uh, hey, there's no one else to pray to to get your prayers answered. Uh, there's no one else to trust in. Uh, who can help you? Uh, there's no one like him. Uh, he's the great I Am. Can I say this? Uh, 
He's the uncharted one. He's from everlasting to everlasting. You can chart if you know my history everywhere I've been. But can I say, you can't chart him because he's been everywhere all the time. He's the uncharted one. Huh? You can only go back so far. And he goes way beyond that. You can only go ahead so far. And he goes way beyond that. He's the uncharted one. Can I say this? He's the unencumbered one. Uh, that means uh, he has all power. Every day, he tells the sun when to shine. And unlike your batteries in your phone, he never needs to be recharged. Because he has all power. Can I say he's the one that makes the rain? He's the one that makes the rivers and the waters. He's the one that feeds uh, everything that is fed. He feeds the ants and the grasshoppers and the mosquitoes uh, and the birds and the beasts. Uh, and he feeds man. Uh, and he does it every day. Uh, and he doesn't diminish any power uh, to do it the next day. Uh, hey, he's the one uh, who's the resurrection and the life. Uh, he's the light. Uh, he never loses any light, uh, never loses any life, uh, and never loses any resurrection power because uh, he's the unencumbered one. Uh, hey, I've got news for you. He doesn't even break a sweat because uh, he has all power. Uh, hey, uh, some of y'all give the devil too much credit. Uh, the devil is powerless before God because uh, he's the great I am uh, and he's unencumbered. Uh, and he has all power, hallelujah. Huh? Can I say he's the understanding one? He knows everything. Nothing's ever occurred to him. Nothing's ever been new to him. He knows and understands everything. He understands everything about you. And he understands everything about me. And he understands everything about everyone on the planet right now. He knows the number of hairs on every head, uh, and he knows the total number of hair uh, 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 throughout the world. Uh, he knows the thoughts and the intents of your heart uh, and the thoughts and intents of my heart. Uh, he knows how many molecules it takes to make you uh, and how many molecules it takes to make me. Uh, he knows my down-sitting and uprising, uh, and he knows your down-sitting and uprising. Uh, he knows your fears, uh, and he knows my fears. Uh, he knows your strengths, uh, and he knows my strengths. Uh, he knows what troubles you, uh, and he knows what troubles me. Uh, and in all of that, in all the knowledge that he has, uh, he has compassion, uh, and he understands why you are why, the way you are, uh, and what he wants to do in your life. Because uh, he's the understanding one. There are a lot of folks that ask me questions, I say, well, I just don't understand. A lot of things I don't understand. I don't understand how America could go so bad so quick. Right. But God does. Uh, I don't understand what would cause a mama to walk off and leave a baby in a dumpster. God understands all that. I don't understand it. I don't understand how Brother Brian can eat as much as he does and he doesn't weigh 700 pounds. But God understands that. He understands everything because he's the great I am. He's the understanding one. He understands why you're afraid to step out on faith. He understands why you're hesitant to get hurt again. He understands what it is to have your friends and family walk out on you. He understands what it is uh, 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 to have the iniquity uh, laid on you that's laid on you. He understands all that because he's the understanding one. He was touched with the feelings of our infirmities, yet he was without sin. Uh, can I say this? He's the uncompromising one. He changeth not. Thank you, Brother Phil. I'm going to say that again. He changeth not. I don't mean to be ugly, but I'm going to get a little ugly right here. 
Now, I remember back in the 70s, how many was in an independent Baptist church in the 70s? Three of us. I remember back in the 70s, Brother Ray, when they come through talking about the boob tube, the TV, and how nasty and filthy it was, and they'd have these big campaigns, and they'd take them out back and shoot them. And if you had a TV, you was wicked. Now every Baptist preacher I know has got a TV. Some of the ones that shot them got TV. Peter, you remember those when you weren't allowed to have a TV? Pete didn't know what a cartoon was until he got married. And I'm not talking about her. much is it not true you'd come home from work catch him watching cartoons grown man why because as a child he wasn't allowed to have a TV he didn't know who Popeye was and Tom and Jerry and Bugs Bunny and all them characters they'd taken off TV because they said they was too violent Lord have mercy it built character there's nothing greater than watching an anvil fall on the wild E. Coyote's head uh, Hail to the roadrunner. Beep, beep. Uh, you grew up in that atmosphere. Now all them preachers got TVs. Who compromised? Was it God's will not to have TVs? Now what they say, Brother James, they have them for educational purposes. Sorry, no good compromise. No, they was wrong back then. Uh, I made a lot of people mad because that's just what I do. They're blowing up very expensive TVs. I said, duh, mine's got an on and off switch on it. They've got something on there I don't need to see. I can turn it off. What can I say? They've compromised. Can I say churches have compromised on their music? Let me say this about church music. I'm talking about good church music. It's not about the music. It's about the words. And if the words don't glorify Jesus, it's not good church music. If the music is all about getting you all wound up in a, in a fury and jumping and dancing and flipping and flopping then it's not about God. Music has always moved people. But good godly music just sets the table for preaching. Huh? But now, churches base everything on music. Who compromised? Now listen, I, God's in the music. He gave us a whole book of psalms. God inhabits the praise of His people. That means He comes and sets down when we get to praising Him in song. But it's never to supersede preaching. God chose through the foolishness of preaching to save them that would believe. Can I say, churches have changed their music programs. They've changed their, their whole... I mean, I know I'm, I'm, I'm old and antique antiquated but here was the children's program when I come up preaching Sunday morning preaching Sunday night preaching Wednesday preaching Saturday night so what did you do for fun preaching Sunday morning preaching Sunday night preaching Wednesday preaching Saturday huh 90 percent of people that's got children, the first time they come to church, the first question they ask is, what do you have for children? And when he's in the old building, I made somebody real mad one time, brother. I said, well, we got preaching. He said, you don't have video games or somewhere for the kids to go? I said, we got a church pew right there. She said, well, my kids won't go for that. I said, who's the parent? Oh, boy, that, oh, Lord have mercy. That's when I started wearing bulletproof dress. No, no, I'm just teasing. What I'm saying is, we got to have a circus to get people to come to church anymore. We got to have three rings going on all the time. You know, there are some churches they got something every night of the week. 
to keep their people entertained. Friend, if Jesus isn't enough Monday through Sunday, you've got problems. Hmm? Uh, but they're, they're folks, they, they got to have something all the time. Listen, I, I wasn't going to bring this up, but I'm going to bring it up. I got to, I got to, I got to. Vexed me. Where's my buddy Ray? He'll bail me out. There's a whole facet of these independent Baptists that are really throwing that Asbury crowd under the bus. Now, you have all know my stand on this thing. If it, if it sways from the Word of God, it ain't right. I don't care what it is. But I do rejoice in the fact that the world has taken note that Jesus' name is being mentioned with revival. My fear is a lot of these folks are going to get down there and get hoodwinked and they're going to believe a false gospel and they're going to be made twofold the child of hell. I'm not for all that mess. But I'm not going to throw them under the bus. I'm not going to throw water on it because, listen, I'm not to judge any man, other man's servant. That's all between them and God. I've got a full-time, 24-hour day job to take care of me. And if there's anybody in this building needs revival, it's me. Are you listening? But there's a whole facet of independent Baptists. I mean, cutting them up, spitting them out, chewing them up. I mean, just destroying them. You better be careful. But one of those so-called events I saw on Twitter said, boy, it's great to be in church. I say, man, it's great to be in church. You glad to be in church? I'm glad to see you in church. Huh? But this is what, that, what I saw in the pictures. They didn't show a man preaching. They didn't show a choir singing. They didn't show special singing. They didn't show an altar call. They had pictures of a man in a blow-up suit. Have you seen them things where the people put on these suits, they look like sumo wrestlers, and they go running, and they bounce into each other? Well, this guy was in this big blow-up suit, and, and kids all in the sanctuary had these little uh, 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 pink balls wrapped in Velcro, and they was throwing them at him, and if it stuck to him, I guess they got a prize. The same crowd that's spitting up the Asbury crowd, they also had a big blow-up money machine where you kids got them and all this money blew up in the air. Whatever they could catch, they got to keep. Listen, that's just as big a circus as anything else going on, and God's not within a million miles of it. Uh, you talking about a display uh, uh, of uh, the money changers that Jesus ran out of the temple. It was right down there in that church, wherever it was. Making merchandise of the things of God. I'm just telling you, God hadn't compromised anything. You know what he says? Be ye holy, for I am holy. And God hadn't compromised. You know what he is? He's still holy. Amen. God expects holiness out of his people. Right. Now, in our flesh, we'll never be holy, but we ought to strive for it. Right. We ought to settle for nothing less. Can I say he's the uncompromised one? I know I made somebody mad on that. Uh, if you don't want to shoot your TV, take it to Brother Jim. He, he's got a shooting range. He'll shoot it, all right? Uh, he'll, he'll take down the pawn shop and, and hawk it. What a blessing, huh? Oh, I mean, just stupid stuff. Uh, listen, they'll get all over Nazi Germany for burning books, but I've seen them burn albums, burn books, and do everything in the name of Jesus. Uh, do you know why Jesus gave us the, the Holy Ghost? To lead us and guide us into all truth. Not to dominate and take over the world to lead us and guide us in all truth, and for us to let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. God help us to be real, not fruitcakes. There's a lot of religious fruitcakes out there. I don't have nothing to do with any of them. That's why I just hang out here at Emmanuel Baptist Church. Love on y'all and y'all love on me. Can I say he's the uncompromising one? He hadn't compromised on anything. By the way, if it was sin in the Old Testament, it's still sin today. You're welcome. Huh? You say, well, God didn't say that in the New Testament. He don't have to say things over and over and over again. 
Huh? There are certain things he made real clear in Leviticus that you go against moral morals of, of nature and morals of humanity, and he didn't have to say them again. Don't made him mad, Brother Sammy. Can I say this? He's the unprejudiced one. He's no respecter of people. He tasted death for every man. He loves every sinner. Hmm? Uh, by the way, if he was prejudiced, us Gentiles be in trouble. Uh, uh, and, and, and you white supremacy crowd, I know some of us look a little pale, but we're all a bunch of mutts. I got Native American in me. I got Scottish in me. I got who knows what in me. Uh, God's no respecter of people. Are you listening? Uh, it doesn't matter what the color is. only thing that matters to God is whether or not the blood of Jesus Christ has been applied. His people were the Jews, by the way, and they're still His chosen people. But He allowed us to come alongside and take up the same promises of Abraham. Hallelujah. He's the unprejudiced one. He's the unchallenged one. Can I say this? He's the unsearchable one. His ways are past finding out. And then He's the unforgettable one. You ever come in contact with Him, put your faith in Him, you'll never get over it. He's the unforgettable one. I'll tell this story. I've told it, but I'll tell it again. Y'all know my Aunt Lynn back there just celebrated her 80th birthday. Y'all know her daddy was my grandpa, the preacher. Greatest preacher I ever heard. He won't preach me out of hell. Granddaddy could say more than 20 minutes than a lot of jokers could say in a week and a half. My granddaddy was a big man. He used to wipe sweat with a dish towel. And uh, never wore a tie like this, Brother Phil. He always had them clip-ons. And we wouldn't get through the first chorus of the first congregational song, and that thing done been thrown off. He's just a big man. My granddaddy get to preaching, and, and I, I just wait for his head to hit the lights up on above the platform. I mean, he was, he was just, he was a preacher. The old mountain preacher. And uh, my granddaddy had a deacon in the church. Uh, Brother, Cord, uh, Brother Cheryl. Cordell Cheryl. Brother Cheryl's the first man I ever heard teach the book of Revelation in Sunday school. Brother Cheryl was an old iron worker, but he's an intelligent man, loved the Lord, and uh, big man, strong man. And Brother Cheryl got Alzheimer's. He got Alzheimer's back when the disease was just really starting to be developed where people understood what it was. And he got where he couldn't understand why he couldn't do what he, he always wanted to do. And he was a big man, a strong man, an iron worker all his life. And he got a little violent in his sons. And he had, he, his son Mike was a big man. And they couldn't contain him. And he's afraid he's going to hurt his wife and hurt somebody. So they put him in an Alzheimer home up in Dayton, Ohio. And he got so bad he didn't remember his wife didn't remember his children. Didn't remember his grandchildren. I'll never forget the last time I saw him, we was having homecoming at the church. That's what we call now an anniversary service. We used to have dinner on the ground, homecoming service. And they went and they got Brother Cheryl, brought him to church. It was amazing, Brother Ray. Didn't remember his wife, didn't remember his children. But he couldn't forget the preacher who led him to Jesus. Friend, there's a lot of things you forget in this life. But if you know the Lord, you'll never forget the place where you met Him. Because He's the unforgettable one. Huh? Why do you think He gives us that assurance deep down in our soul? Because He dwells there. Now listen. He said all that say what He offers us. He offers us unmerited favor. I could have went on for hours of all that He is. 
But he is what he is. And we look at that and we say, who am I? Well, this was what the great I am does for us. He offers us unmerited favor. His grace. We don't deserve it. We can't earn it. We can't work for it. We're saved by grace through faith, my dear friends. And when we put our faith in the shed blood of Calvary and the finished works of the cross, uh, put our faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord, uh, uh, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. When we believe on the Lord, uh, He saves us by His marvelous grace. Uh, we didn't earn it, but He gives us the unmerited favor of God. Amen. Can I say... He not only offers us that, He offers us His undying love. He said, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Can I say He offers us an unconditional pardon? Uh, he didn't save us from some sin, He saved us from all sin. Can I say this? He offers us unmatched peace, a peace that passes all understanding. He offers unto us an unremarkable watch care. He's always watching out for you and I. And then He offers us an unbelievable future. Uh, do you know Him tonight? Has He ever sought you out and visited you? Have you put your faith and trust in Him tonight? Do you know Him tonight? You say, preacher, I don't, I don't know if I know Him. Well, you can know Him. The moment we're going to have an invitation, invite you to come. You can put your faith in Him. You can get to know this very God of the Bible. Say, preacher, I know him. I can go back to the place where I met him. Wonderful one. What are you worried about? What are you stressed out about? What are you encumbered about? He's the unencumbered one. Huh? Why are you struggling? Why are you so cold? Maybe it's because you've taken your eyes off of him. You know, there's a couple times Moses got in trouble because he got his eyes off what God told him. You and I keep our eyes on Him, we'll be all right. But if we get our eyes off of Him, we get back to who am I? And when we become the subject of the situation, nothing good can come of that. But when it's all about the great I am, only good can come from that. The difference is who is sitting on the throne of your heart is it you or is it him? The preacher, I know I'm saved. Wonderful. I'm glad you know him as Savior. Is he your Lord? Is he the great I am on your heart? If so, you'll quit looking at you. Start looking at him. And you'll start saying, not I, but Christ that liveth in me. I wonder tonight. You a little cold? Have you got your eyes off of him? Why don't you come and ask Him to restore unto you the joy of His salvation? Why don't you come and ask Him to become the great I am in your situation again? Why don't you ask Him to take over once again? Why don't you just ask Him to love on you a little bit again? Why don't you ask Him for another touch? Why don't you just ask Him if it would be all right if you come home? This is what I want to do. Brother Clint, I want you and Miss Renee to come. I want you to sing that song, He Let Me Come Back Home. You get that song ready. As they sing this song, God spoke to your heart. Why don't you do business with God tonight? He's the great I am. Let's all stand where they get ready. Let's pray. Father, I'm glad that you have proven so many times that you are the great I am in my life. So many times I'd been shipwrecked had you not stepped in. So many times I would have blown it had you not stepped in. So many times I'd have failed had you not stepped in. And God, when I have failed, you still stepped in. Lord, I pray you'd bless now. Send revival to our hearts. Help us, Lord, to put the focus on where the focus needs to be, on you. Help folks here tonight. Lord, I believe there's somebody here tonight lost. I pray you deal with them about their sin. We tried our best to honor you tonight, Lord. Lord, help them to see you high and lifted up. 
help them to come and give you their heart and their life. Bless now this invitation. Speak to hearts. We'll bless you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.